Last week was an absolutely crazy week with the whole drama revolving FTX, Sam Backman Fried, and Binance, and how that all affected the market with Bitcoin dropping under 18k. So I thought I'd put all the other videos on hold and create an update video on everything that has happened and break down the conflict between Binance and FTX and how the two cryptocurrency exchanges started and developed and how it has affected the market. But before I begin, I must warn that I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. With that being said, on with the video. It all began on November the 2nd following news that Alameda Research, a trading company founded by Sam Bankman Fried, may have had a significant amount of FTX tokens, the native token of the FTX cryptocurrency exchange, according to a leaked balance sheet. The crypto community was concerned about a big trading firm holding so much of a single asset, and there were also questions about the connections between FTX and Alameda. Nearly 23 million FTT, worth over 584.5 million, moved into Binance on November the 5th, according to a Twitter account, Whale Alert, which monitors significant on-chain cryptocurrency movements. The amount represented about 17% of the FTT in circulation at the time. In a tweet on November 6th, Alameda CEO Caroline Ellison attempted to calm any anxiety by stating that the leaked balance sheet wasn't representative of the entire situation and that it was only for a subset of our corporate entities and that other assets worth more than 10 billion weren't affected there. Now, Chang Peng, CZ Zhao, uh, CEO of Binance, announced that his exchange would liquidate all of its FTT tokens later that day, citing recent revelations that have come to light, which are thought to be related to Alameda balance sheets. Now, Zhao claimed that due to its FTX divestment last year, Binance held approximately 2.1 billion equivalent in Binance USD, BUSD, and FTT, but he did not elaborate on Binance's current FTT holdings. The token sales, he continued, would be conducted in a way that minimizes market impact, and he anticipated that they would take a few months to complete. He added that the transfer of nearly 23 million FTT on November 5th was a component of Binance's liquidation strategy. Allison tweeted Zhao on November 6th, shortly after Zhao announced that Binance was liquidating its FTT position and that Alameda would happily buy it all for $22 per share. Users of FTX started to withdraw their money from the exchange out of fear that it would fail as a result of the circulating reports and rumors, and commentators urged those who hadn't done so already to do so now. Users started to complain about sluggish withdrawals on FTX after Nansen data showed stablecoin outflows on FTX reached 451 million over seven days on November 7th. The exchange responded to the withdrawal complaints by assuring users that everything was functioning as it should. A competitor is trying to go after us with false rumors, Backman Fried tweeted shortly after the exchange addressed users' concerns. He also said that FTX was fine and the assets are good. The exchange, according to him, has enough to cover all client holdings. It doesn't invest client assets and it has been processing all withdrawals and will continue to be. Zhao was urged to work together with for the ecosystem by Bankman Fried, who claimed that FTX had 1 billion in extra cash. I think we will stay in the free market, CZ responded when asked about the earlier offer Ellison had made to buy Binance's FTT holdings for $22 per token on Twitter. As a result of this series of announcements, some analysts started to issue warnings on November 7 that FTT's price would decline significantly. Early on November 8, the price of FTT dropped by about 30%, going from $22 to around $15.40 in a matter of hours. 
Fears that FTX might soon fail caused the price of Bitcoin to fall as well. On 8 of November, Bankman Fried made a shocking declaration that FTX and Binance had come to an agreement on a strategic transaction for the exchange to support what he called a liquidity crunch. The main justification given by FTX for asking Binance to intervene, he continued, all assets will be covered one to one. Shortly after, Zhao announced that Binance had signed a non-binding letter of intent to purchase the exchange, but added that they reserved the right to pull out of the deal at any time. Bangman Free deleted his accusatory tweet thread on November 8th, a few hours after announcing the partnership with Binance in which he also asserted that FTX and its assets were fine. Unconfirmed rumors that FTX's legal and compliance staff left on November 8th circulated, and on November 9th, the websites for FTX Ventures and Alameda, the venture capital arm of FTX, were taken offline. On November 9th, rumors about Binance potentially wanting to break the agreement started to circulate. Binance announced on November 9 that it will not be pursuing the acquisition of FTX less than 48 hours after Zhao first said that Binance could move to buy FTX. The exchange added that issues are beyond our control or ability to help, citing the reported mishandling of customer funds and alleged US agency investigations. Investor apprehension increased in response to the news, sending the cryptocurrency market into a tailspin with Bitcoin's price hitting a multi-year low of 15600 Analysts predicted the further decline and predicted Bitcoin would settle around the 12000 level. On November 9, it was reported that Bankman Freed had put out a call to investors seeking $8 billion in emergency funding to address the liquidity crunch brought on by user withdrawals over the previous few days. According to reports, Bankman Fried wanted to raise up to $4 billion from investors and cover the remaining amounts with debt financing and possibly even his own wealth to make sure customers were satisfied. On November 9th, FTX website went offline for about two hours. And when it came back online, it strongly discouraged users from making deposits and stated that the exchange was unable to handle withdrawals. The notice was further confirmed in a post that was pinned on FTX's official Telegram channel by the channel's administrator, who stated that withdrawals of crypto and fiat were impacted and that they had no idea when it would be put back online. They also stated that they have a lack of information at this point. Secura Capital, a venture capital firm, revealed in a letter to its partners on November 10 that it has written down to zero and declared a complete loss of it on its 213.5 million investments in FTX and FTX US. The letter claimed that FTX's exposure to the exchange is limited in its Global Growth Fund 3 where the cost basis for the FTX portion of the fund was $150 million, despite the fact that the crisis facing the company has created a solvency risk. CEO SBF has apologized in one of his first public statements since the crypto market was inundated with rumors and worries about FTX insolvency. SBF acknowledged to investors in a thread on Twitter on November 10 that he should have done better in terms of being transparent about the situation with FTX. The FSA announced on November 10 that the administrative actions had been taken against FTX Japan as a result of FTX Trading Limited's suspension of withdrawals without clearly disclosing the reasons to investors. According to financial regulator, it had issued business improvements and suspension orders in accordance with Japanese law, specifically the Financial Instruments and Exchange Act and Payment Services Act. As of 3.50 p.m. UTC, the exchange's hot wallet address has assumed activity f after being inactive since FTX announced on November 8 that it would be stopping all user withdrawals. According to blockchain data, the hot wallet which had a balance of 469 million at the time of publication has since been empty of numerous kinds of tokens and significant amounts of transactions. 
In light of FTX liquidity issues, the chair of Financial Services Committee of the U.S. House of Representatives called for more federal regulation of cryptocurrency trading platforms and consumer protection. In a statement on November 10, Waters pointed to FTX's problem as the most recent illustration of incidents involving the collapse of cryptocurrency companies and how such occurrences might have an effect on American consumers. The committee's chair pushed for legislation to create a framework for digital assets, praising her collaboration with Patrick McHenry, the ranking member of the Financial Services Committee on a stablecoin regulation bill. El Salvador's exposure to the FTX situation was debunked by CZ, CEO of Binance, who posted on Twitter that the amount of misinformation is insane. President Bukilili had informed him that we don't have any Bitcoin in FTX and we never had any business with them. He continued adding that he had exchanged messages with President Nayib a few moments ago. Emir criticized Gensler in a tweet on from November 10 for running to the media as FTX's liquidity issues caused tremors in the crypto market. The SEC's chair alleged collaboration with SBF and FTX was being investigated, the Republican lawmaker claimed, but his team only cited reports that were given to his office as evidence without going into further detail. On November 10, CCI CEO Sheila Warren informed Cointelegraph that the council had accepted FTX US resignation as an associate member of the organization in order to create real change. Warren said, we remain committed to working towards creating regulation that protects users and safeguards innovation. Although the news this week has been shocking, we also witness a strong sense of community. We have a historic chance to implement the best policies. Trading on FTX US may be halted in a few days, according to a banner at the top of the website. Users were urged to please close down any positions they might want to close out of the exchange, but were also assured that withdrawals are and will remain open. On November 10, the Bahamas Security Watchdog, the Securities Commission of the Bahamas SCB, suspended FTX's registration in the nation and froze the assets of its local affiliate. FTX Digital Markets FDM and related parties. The freeze was justified by public statements indicating that assets were handled improperly and it decided that putting FTX into provisional liquidation was the prudent course of action. Assets belonging to FTX cannot be moved without the written consent of the provisional liquidator who was appointed by the Bahamian Supreme Court. Well. Currently, it's quite late into the night of November 11th, and I think I'm going to be getting this video out by latest um, tomorrow morning, so 12th of November um, in the morning. You will see this, and um, usually I post on Mondays, Tuesdays, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but I really wanted to get this video out because of all the things that's because of all the crazy things that have been happening for the past week. Um, so if you enjoyed the video, do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to support the channel, hit the notification bell so you get notified um, for any upcoming videos. I just had to get this one out really fast because of all the things that have been uh, occurring. But the weekly videos are still going to continue. And we'll see, maybe there will be more uh, ad advancements in this whole series of events over the weekend, but only time will tell. So till then, this has been the Coin Fixer, signing out.